Let's talk about tools and techniques. There are a lot of different tools for leatherworking, ranging from pieces of wood to fully automated machines. I'll mostly be talking about the hand tools that I own, but there are plenty that I don't. So let's start by talking about the bare necessities. The most essential and basic of the leathercraft tools is the knife. Knives come in lots of shapes and sizes, but I find the best basic knife is a small X-Acto blade. Some people recommend box cutters, but because of the depth of the blade, these don't handle curves very well, so I would stick with a smaller X-Acto blade to start. Next is the edge beveler, not to be confused with the beveler tool. The edge beveler allows you to cut off the corners of your edges so that you can make them rounded. It's important for the beveler to match the thickness of the leather you're using, otherwise the edge is too pointy to round out properly. For a leather between 5 and 9 ounces, you can usually get away with a number 3. Next is the awl. This awl is usually referred to as a scratch awl because it can be easily used to scratch lines. At least, that's what I tell myself. This awl is also perfect for piercing holes for sewing, but it can be used for other things too and is generally very useful to have. Next is the burnisher or edge slicker. This is a piece of wood that helps you round out those beveled edges. Really, it can be any piece of smooth wood or even bone, but having a groove can make things easier. Then we have the mallet. It can be rubber or rawhide, just not metal. Mine is rawhide. You'll notice mine has one side covered with leather, which is so if I need to shape leather with the mallet blows, it doesn't mark the leather. Next is the stitch groover. This tool will cut a groove at a fixed distance from the edge of your leather. Your thread will then sit snugly in this channel rather than being raised over the leather. It can also be used for decorative edge work. You can adjust the distance using the screw at the top. Some versions combine this tool with a regular line edge tool. This is a tool that draws a line at a fixed distance from the edge of your leather. It's useful for making straps, laces, or marking stitches if it doesn't matter if the stitch sits on top. Next up, needles. I prefer harness needles because they don't have a wide eye, which makes pulling them through the leather easier. Plus, they're sturdier in general. At the very least, blunted needles are a must. I'll go over why in the technique section. Then there's pliers. Usually, I use these for sewing to pull the needles through. Of course, in order to sew, you'll need some waxed thread. Waxed thread is pretty essential for sewing leather, otherwise your stitches won't stay put and everything unravels. Next, let's look at some hole punches. There's a rotary hole punch, which you can rotate through to different sizes and punch by squeezing. These are great if you need to punch a hole after you've already constructed a piece, but in general, I prefer what are called drive punches, which you use with a mallet. I find these much easier on the hands. If you want to use rivets, you'll need an easy rivet kit like this, with a stick piece that has a concave end, and possibly an anvil that's also concave. And if you want to rivet, you should also have a pair of wire cutters. These are the best way to remove rivets, should you ever need to. Next, there's a few items that aren't leathercraft specific, but which will be very useful. For instance, scissors. These don't have to be heavy duty like these, any sharp scissors will do the job. Scissors can be used for cutting thread and thin to medium thickness leather. Next, a soft pencil for marking and drawing. A ruler and a cloth measuring tape for, you know, measuring things. A square is also often useful to have. And a lighter for burning your knots. So that's it for basic leatherworking. But for tooling, you will need to add a swivel knife. This is used to cut lines, which you will then shape using a beveler. It's a good idea to start out with a smooth beveler and a crosshatch beveler. There's a lot of other kinds of tooling tools, but these three will serve you well for a long time. So that's all you really need to get started doing leather craft. Now let's talk about some techniques. I'll start with techniques for cutting. For starters, you always want to cut with a sharp blade. You can tell a knife is dull if you have to pass more than a couple times to make a cut. That being said, a fresh blade sometimes cuts too easily and you can get off course, so pay extra attention after you first change the blade. When you're cutting, always try to use the biggest muscle group possible. When cutting small curves, you can use your hand muscles, when cutting wider curves, use your whole arm, and when cutting straight lines, use your whole body. Now let's talk about techniques for edge beveling. Ideally, you want to cut at a 45 degree angle and apply the same amount of pressure along the full length. 
If the pressure isn't even, the bevel will be wobbly. For pieces that are thinner, you can try to apply less pressure when you bevel. For pieces that are thicker, apply more pressure or bevel at multiple angles. You can also use your beveler to correct your edge if there's a part that sticks out. For edges that are very sharp, you may want to pass over with some sandpaper. All right, let's talk about burnishing techniques. A lot of people think that burnishing requires putting some kind of product on the edge, such as wax, but this is only half the story. Burnishing is mainly a result of the edge of the leather being shaped and squished flat and smooth, which happens much more easily when wet. Wax or conditioner just makes the edge shiny. You can actually apply it after you've burnished. But if you apply it after the leather is wet, just before burnishing, it'll make the edge slippery and slick, which makes burnishing faster. Plus, you combine two steps into one. Just remember that the important part about burnishing is the edge being wet, not waxed. If there are small areas where a regular burnisher won't reach, any smooth tool can be used to burnish these areas if you use this technique. All right, let me tell you all about the awl. <laughs> we always punch our holes from the top grain through the suede side so as not to split the top grain. The main thing about awls is that the hole size you punch should really match the needle size you have. If your needle is bigger, your awl should be bigger. Also, don't forget that leather is three-dimensional, so when punching holes, try not to do them at an angle. Unless you're close to the edge of the leather, in which case you can angle inwards towards the center to give yourself a little more material between the hole and the edge. If you prefer to use a chisel or even a small hole punch to make your holes, that is totally fine. These are easier on the hands, although they can be a little more time-consuming. Now it's hammer time! Like when you're hammering a nail, you want to use larger muscle groups and big strikes when doing things like making holes. However, I find that for riveting, it's best to start with small taps and work up to the bigger strikes. Otherwise, it can squish the rivet sideways. I also recommend getting a set of earplugs to protect your eardrums when doing lots of intense hammering. Let's go over some groover techniques. You usually will want to make your stitch groove before you bevel your edge to give your groover more to hang on to. However, if there are any imperfections in your edge, the groover will know. So if you're not sure your edge is perfect, bevel first and carefully groove after. Maintain an even pressure against the edge of the leather and downwards with the groover hole by torquing the tool. The line groover is a little more straightforward with simply downward pressure and sideward pressure against the edge. All right, let's have a look at sewing. First, I'll go over my infamous trick of how to keep your needles on your thread for those of you who haven't seen it in my other videos. Start by sewing through your thread like this. Then take the thread that slides through and sew through again. Make sure it pulls all the way through and lies flat. There are a few ways people sew leather, but my preferred way, which is easy and effective, is to pre-punch my holes and then do a saddle stitch. This is why we want blunt needles, because a sharp needle will try to punch through where you have no hole and get stuck partway through. This method is effective for any kind of project, especially when curves or different shapes coming together are involved. Another stitch you can do is a whip stitch, which just loops around and around. Or this one that looks like little X's and is essentially a double whip stitch. These are more decorative and less sturdy, but they're not without their uses. When you're done sewing, the waxed thread also allows you to make an unbreakable knot since there's a clump of melted wax gluing it in place. It's best when sandwiched between two pieces. Now let's have a look at some riveting techniques. To use your easy rivet kit, you put the anvil underneath and your stick on top and hammer the rivet together. A rivet has two parts that snap together and as they're hammered, the pin squishes flat inside of the receiving end, holding it in place. So the rivet has to be the correct length for the thickness of your leather. The perfect length is when the pin comes just out past the leather or is about flush with it. If it's too long, it'll squish sideways if you're not careful. 
If it's too short, it won't form a proper attachment and will snap open. A trick is if your rivet is almost long enough but not quite, you can make the hole for it larger. This gives a little extra room to fully attach on the other side. If your rivets are too long, you can cut down the shaft with pliers or wire cutters and try to make them whole again. <laughs> this way, they can still squish or spread out inside the receiving end and will hold in place like a regular rivet. Okay, now for a quick tip about pencils. Not all 2B pencils are created equal. Some have oddly dense or a slightly plasticky feeling lead, while others are clearly much softer. You really want your lead to be as soft as possible so that you can mark your leather without scratching it or pressing into it. Marks can be erased in case you make a mistake, but impressions last forever. Also, for some reason, erasing the top grain of your leather will usually make your pencil marks appear darker. This is a technique I discovered and use a lot when drawing tooling designs. Also, incidentally, not all erasers are created equal. The softer the eraser, the better they will work. Hard or shiny erasers just don't do the trick. And that's it for our basic tools and techniques. We'll cover tooling techniques in another video, but now you know what tools to buy to get started and some tricks and techniques. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.